March 12th, 2022 is the day, and what a day for basketball in the Eastern Wisconsin Conference. We had two teams advance to state on this Saturday to start it off the Ron Colley Jets and then the Brilliant Lions. And yeah, this is our emergency episode talking all about those two games that took place today. And I'm your host today, Drew Skyberg. I'm joined alongside the brilliant basketball connoisseur, Robert Schimmick. Robert, how are you doing after what just took place this Saturday night? Yeah, you know, I'm obviously thrilled. You know, me and you have basically covered this basketball season, you know, all the way since November. And it's been a fun ride. And it's just awesome that it gets to extend. And we can see not one, but two teams at state, just like we did couple of years ago with Valders and Ron Colley. That's just always good when you can have about a quarter of your conference at the state tournament. Yeah, shows how well represented the EWC is to say the least. It was and these were great games played both on both by both teams today. And just I just want to shout out, you know, Ron Colley Jets, you know, coming in support for the Brilliant Lions. That was good to see. Mm-hmm. You know, good to see two two teams in the conference, you know, cheering on each other, but we'll start, we'll start going to Appleton East, you know, earlier this Saturday afternoon, we saw, you know, at Appleton East, the Ron Colley Jets, they traveled there, they faced Iola Scandinavia, and they were 27 and 0 at the time, they were unbeaten, a lot of people, they had Iola winning this game, Jordan Lorenz was on the call, he was doing color commentary, and, you know, Robert, were you able to catch any of this game, what did you think? Throw some thoughts at me. Yeah, you know, I really wanted to get to Appleton East today, but there was just couldn't make it. Some other stuff I had to take care of. And, yeah, so I was in the car for most of the first, pretty much all of the first half. I know it started out, I didn't see the first couple minutes. I know it started out like, we like 7-0 Iola. And then Raquel went on a little 9-0 run. It was like 9-7. But, like, I watched most of the first half. And, I mean, in the car, it, it's kind of it's kind of hard to – to like you know really dive into the game when you're just watching on your phone but yeah I I just basically saw Luke Pouch just make some really uh tough shots from beyond the arc off the drive mid-range he had everything going I mean Luke Pouch dude 56 the other night he's been Uh, tough like mention that quick 44 and a half like Luke Pouch whole I mean he hasn't been putting up the numbers he has that he was in the beginning of the year to the second half of the season, but not. I mean, once tournament time comes around, anything goes for that dude. Dude's one of the biggest competitors probably I've ever seen come through the conference. And, yeah, he kind of put the team on his back there. And, you know, late in the game, took some shots for him, but, you know, took a charge, I think, down the stretch. And there was one play I want to highlight in the second half. And he – this one, it might not be the play you're thinking of, but it kind of just, like, kind of went unnoticed – Iola's driving baseline, and Luke Pouch really just, like, steps out and, like, puts his chest into him, like, just just to the point where it wasn't, like, a push or a foul. And the Iola guy just kind of, like, froze. And instead of, like, you know, getting an easy basket or following him, he, he just turns the ball over and makes an errant pass, and then Ron Colley gets followed on the other side. I thought that kind of, like, little swing there. It looked like he had an open layup, but Pouch was just too quick. Beat him to the spot, and yeah, that's what I saw. Just making the veteran plays, and just almost—I mean, a lot of guys, a lot of guys contributed in that win. Um, Witzak had what I think six or eight or eight, eight of ten, something eight of ten throws. from the line. Yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. big time shooting. And he made like yeah, he made like six his last six in a row to just seal the game. Game was over, and it, yeah, it was. I really enjoyed you know seeing Ron Cobbley get to state and. At that time, I was waiting for the brilliant game. So, yeah, it was good to see. Yeah, and they did a wonderful broadcast. You know, Appleton East put on they were at, the, at that school. There was great TV broadcast we were able to witness on YouTube. But, yeah, talk about Luke Pouts. He's been tough this postseason. He got even tougher, right? Uh, this mm-hmm. this game, especially against, you know, 27-0 and Iola. A lot of people had this team favorited. I know Robert and I were leading – we were both leaning more towards Ron Colley here. Again, Luke Pouts, he's been shooting the ball, and he's been shooting the ball very well. That's been a big story. Four threes in back-to-back games. In both sectional games, Luke Pouts has put up four threes a game. That's Come on, that, those, those are video game numbers right now, especially even 
you know, his numbers that we talked about against St. Mary's, that was, you know, talking about the 50, the 56 point outing there. And then, yeah, putting up 23 against this tough Iola team. And then, yeah, with Zach coming up really big throughout the stretch. And just, yeah, my, my story in that was just Luke Pouts, you know, his three point shooting and just, I mean, overall scoring was big for this Ron Cali Jets team. Of course, Witsack, you know, with the free throws was big, a big moment. And just Pouts taking that charge, too. That was that was another one that I know you mentioned, but it just, you know, come on, big, big time players making big time plays. It, it, it It's just good to see that. And then, Robert, you know, the two guys who you had for your preseason things uh, with Pouts and Witsack in the top in the top 10, both from Ron Cali. Both those guys, they were the leading scorers, you know, for this Ron Colley Jets team. So, you know, they, they showed up when it mattered the most. I wanted to point that out as well. And I felt they were able to really help, hold guys in check, too. Parker Prawl was the guy only finishing with eight points. You know, usually one of those guys you'd think would score more here. But it was really a balanced attack by Iola, to say the least. But, you know, Robert, anything else with this Ron Colley game? Ron Colley makes the state nine times in the last 18 years, right? Is that the stat? Yeah, I dug up the archives uh, quickly after the game to look from, so my math might be wrong, but it was 04, 05 season. So I think, I think it is throughout 18 years because it is either 18 or 17. I, since 2005, 04, 05 season, they've made it nine times. This was their ninth time. And yeah, you know, just closing up that game, thought that Ryan Fisher uh, left wing three. Yeah, oh, yeah. About maybe two, three minutes, like, in that area. A couple minutes left to go. That was huge. That kind of just, like, you know, gave them that extra little gap, breathing room, so they didn't, you know, have to be in a one-possession game. And then I just saw it all season long. He's been, I think, the best on-ball perimeter defender in the league. It's just been Braden Yonda. Um, you know, he's just – he had – Pouts was on him for a little bit, I know, but Yondo was on him primarily on Parker Prawl and some other guys too. But yeah, Parker Prawl, you know, eight points. It's about a third of what he averages. He averages, you know, in the low 20s, I think maybe like 23, 24 points per game. And yeah, so that's it's just great to see Ron Colley win. And we'll I'll be interested to see who they draw. I think I think there'll be a two seed. I, I looked at the teams. I think there'll be a two. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that right now too. Yeah, you know, Ryan Fisher, that was his lone points his, came off one shot that was that three pointer. So talk about scoring once in the game. You know, good time to use it at the end of the game there. And let's talk about the seed placements. Mark Miller threw in his predictions. I'll I'll, I'll read you his, and here it is. So he went. He did put Ron Colley at the two seed. So that was kind of where I I like that as well. But Milwaukee Academy of Science after they beat Howard's Grove by seventeen, I believe it was ninety one seventy four around mm-hmm. there. Uh, they got the one. Ron Colley gets the two. Marshall gets the three. Sin at 22 and six. And then Cameron gets the four potentially at 19 and seven. Again, these are these are guesses. These are possibilities. This isn't the official ones. We'll we'll tweet or we'll share the official ones when we get them, right? So you think that's something reasonable for the Ron Colley Jets? Yeah, that's I, I don't see how Marshall or how Cameron would even get ahead of them. I think Milwaukee Science is number one. But, yeah, I think for the Ron Colley Jets, you know, they this was their game that was a state-level game. You know, you won this game. Now I think, yeah, you don't ever want to assume you're going to the Cole Center and win. But, I mean, hey, I'll say this. Luke Pouts does have some Cole Center experience. He was there as a freshman uh, when they lost to New Glarus, I believe. Yep. And – yeah, they so Luke Fultz has some experience, and I, I don't. I mean, I don't. I, I don't know Cameron and Marshall uh, very well, but I, I couldn't imagine they'd have too much better than Iola, or as much height as an Iola team did. So yeah, I, I like uh, Ron Colley, whoever they draw, and to that that'll be a fun one. A Milwaukee Academy of Science versus Ron Colley, if that happens, that if they be. happen to see each other. Hopefully, if that's that. It, odds are it's looking like that would be the championship if it were to get there right now. But let's talk about – all right, well, I know you described it as – is it your number one game of all time? Freedom versus Brilliant at T- TR. This was – this was a great, you know, game, a game of a lifetime to say the least. Um, defensive battle, you know, of course, to start. But, yeah, Robert heads to TR where he's well-known at. And, you know, just talking through it – 
how was the atmosphere there, right? I, I wasn't at the game. I'm currently back at school in Milwaukee, but how's it going? How was it at the game? Yeah, you know, so obviously you just got to get there early. You know, I just remember back in the early 2010s, you'd just show up to games two hours before, hour before the door opens, and it's already, you know, hundreds of people standing in line. And it was cold in Two Rivers. I mean, you got the wind howling off of Lake Michigan. So not many people, a lot of people are standing in their cars or sitting in their cars before the game. But then it got really long. Everyone just started coming out. It was in front of the TR High School. It was all the way, you know, to the main parking lot. A couple, couple hundred people, I'd say, long. And, yeah, so, you know, I got in there. And it was amazing. There wasn't a, really a sitting seat open. Um, it was a lot of standing room, but not a sitting seat open in the two side bleachers on both sides. And then, yeah, it was just nuts to start the game and yeah, to start the game, I thought, you know, brilliant. I knew it was going to be a very close game, but I was just really surprised at the freedom defense. Like they, you know, they were all just six, six foot to six, seven, and they were all just all over really long, played really, really good defense. Parker Brown, first possession of the game. Barry's a right wing three for the Brilliant Lions. And that I I was really it's like, all right, we scored first. But then yeah, it just came in and freedom just came in and just threw everything they had at them. 19 to 5, the game started out on, and it did not look good, but Brilliant kind of switched up there for a while, got it under control. And then I'll say this: I got a shout out to Two River Schools. Scoreboards go out with about four minutes left in the first half. So I, I immediately, when the scoreboards went out and after about 30 seconds, when it was like, realized we're going to be sitting here for a while, immediately thought of the Super Bowl, what was it, like 47 or whatever it was. I don't know what number exactly with the, the Ravens and the, yeah, the lights. Thought of that exact, I was like, well, this is interesting. So we're, we're sitting there for like 10 to 12 minutes. The fans are doing the wave. Nothing's going on. And then, you know, they get a turn back down and then Brilliant scores, like, goes on a quick, like, 6-0, 4-0 run into halftime and cuts it to, like, 8. So they're in the hunt. And then the second half, Brilliant just switched every screen. You know, Freedom ran that Gonzo offense, set a lot of ball screens, set a lot of screens off ball to get shooters. And Brilliant really just tried to chase them around the screens. And it just it wasn't working out. Uh, Freedom scored 19 points in the first nine minutes. And I think they had five threes out of those and they were just on fire early on brilliant changed and they just had freedom i believe had 19 points in the final 27 minutes after they changed to like switching screens and you know they just did a really good job and brilliant just just made so many like just hustle plays down the stretch like caden holly he took the charge and he took got a little wrap around steel just just so many things in that game where it's just like I don't know, I'd just be stunned if I was a Freedom fan that we lost the game. I'm, I'm just stunned that Brilliant won the game. I thought they just came and, you know, it was not looking any remotely close for them to win for a while. And they just pulled it out somehow and they punched their ticket in a bloodbath 39-38 victory insane. over Freedom. Yeah, insane to say the least. Uh, it almost seemed like the lights, or not the lights, uh, the scoreboard going out was almost like a timeout, you know, really stopped that freedom run. It seemed like it was mm-hmm. it came up big for Brilliant. It looked like, again, you know, Brilliant, there's some adjustments made with the screens and stuff and such. You just can't point to that. But, wow, uh, this game, you know, looking at at the start, Brilliant has all this whole postseason, you know, they've oh they came Lord. slow to start. Like this, it has been a common theme. Look at against Utsberg, you know, the eight seed, mm-hmm. right? They were they were down double digits to start, and then even Denmark, and then I mean Kiwani, they they took care of right away. But you know, it just it seems like it's been it's been slow starts, and that's been a common theme. And hopefully, you know, in the state semis, that's something we don't see from this team because one of these times it's gonna it's gonna really dig their dig them into a hole that they really can't get out yes. of. That's that's a concern that I had, especially tonight. I thought tonight might have been one of those nights where can can they get out of it? And you bet they can. You know, it's been that's been the story of this, you know, brilliant team. It seems coming over coming, you know, against adversity and they've been really able to handle it in like the, those last 20, you know, 20, 30 minutes of game time. They've been really able to just, you know, minimize the damage and, and just make plays when they need to. And that's been big. And another game where we, like Jeremy Lawrence wasn't like the leading, you know, wasn't like the main guy on offense tonight. And look, look what still happens. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just insane. Like I, I just remember all those like games where, you know, those, those 30 to forties or your, your really low scoring games where you where you used to have like those quarters, you know, where the, there'd be tons of stoppage of play. You get four less minutes and like the leading score tonight of the whole game was Parker Brown with 11 points. And it's just like, that's just unheard of between brilliant and freedom. Freedom's leading scorer, Jace Midbon with 10 points. So it's just like brilliant. I mean, Landon Valcaster came in and brilliant knew they just had to get into his head and they knew that, you know, he was just a fiery player, but you know, they pressured him and he had two really bad turnovers late. It just kind of proved to be the, the um, difference in the game. And yeah, he just, he had that charge late. And that's, that's just the thing about brilliant team. You hit it on the head with Usberg and Denmark. And then they got a little break with Kiwani to kind of reset themselves. But like you said, like they're going to dig themselves into a hole. And yeah, I definitely thought this was the night too. I'm like, I don't know. We couldn't, we couldn't even get a good look, but we couldn't even swing the ball rather than get a good look without turning it over. So yeah, they, they just really just kind of, Freedom just, I think they just kind of got a wave and like they lost focus of what they were trying to do. And yeah, they just did a really good job of switching. Brilliant did. And they lived to see another day. They do indeed. They went on a 10 to 2 run to end the game. Talk about a nice time to go on one of those runs. Yes. Robert was able to live stream the last possession for people who were not in attendance. That was big. We got to hear his live reaction. I was, I was laughing. That was great to hear. Yeah. Last I, was stream. Glad I, didn't, I was glad I didn't say any, uh, you know, things I shouldn't have been saying, but uh, I, I didn't, cause I didn't even really like, I was like, oh yeah, I just, I want to save it. I didn't know like how to save it. So I just saved it. Then my phone died and all the excitement. And so it wasn't until a lot after I could actually go back and watch it. And yeah, so I, I saw that my reaction there, but no, that was all right. And I, I still cannot believe it. It was just, it's just insane. Yeah. yeah, like, I, yeah. Go ahead. Like, so, sorry, sorry. Last thing to add, like you said, like, I just rewatched the game um, when, so when I got home, and brilliant. They didn't allow, they didn't give up a point in the last four minutes. Uh, Freedom had 38 points with about 348, 350 to go. Didn't give up a point the last four minutes of the game, basically. And they only scored, I think, four points in that time, but that's, that's all they needed to do. And the score didn't change for the last two minutes. So great defense being played at the end, and hopefully they can keep it going. Yeah, an incredible defensive outing by both sides, and they better keep it going. They are going to play Thursday at the Kohl Center is what's going to be the, the time or the, the day. We don't know the time yet, but we do have the three potential you know opponents, and I'll read you them, Robert. I want to hear what you think should be the seeding. I'm going to read some other predictions, and then I'll kind of give my thought in as well. Here we go. So the four teams that will be in it, so brilliant, of course, West Salem, Lake Country Lutheran, and then St. Thomas More. What do you think? So if what if what I know about computers and I know the computers seed the state tournament this year, that happens at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. So we'll know around you know lunchtime. If I know what I know about computers, my pick is West Salem. I think they're gonna be the number one seed just because they have the least amount of losses or 25 or 26 and one. I think it's West Salem, they get the one seed. And then I think it's LCL, they'll get the two seed. I believe they're like 26 and two. 26. 20, you have 26 and two, you got it. And then I think Brilliant gets the three seed just because LCL's played a harder schedule than Brilliant. They get the three seed and Brilliant will be 20, uh, 26 and two as well. Mm -hmm. And then St. Thomas Moore, I believe will get the last fourth seed. And just, I think they have three losses and yeah, that's, I know, I know um, I watched, I watched a little bit of them. Wasn't like too surprised by them. They're a really good team, obviously in their state tournament, but I, I kind of think that's how it shakes out. But yeah, I know Mark Miller said he had LCL as the one. I just, with the computers, I would just think since West Salem's won every game by 20, basically this year that they've won and they only have one loss. I would think they're the number one seed, but. Well, obviously, what do you think? Yeah, well, computer, because we, we did confirm, right? Computer is doing this, right? It's not. Yeah, that's correct. Yep. Oh, boy. Computer is. So, I mean, unfortunately, but it's the state now. So hopefully it's not too bad. 
works. I feel that almost hurts Berlin's case, you know, with the computer doing it. Maybe that's just me, but I, I still think either way, you know, I, I think the three might be, might be the spot for them this year. Just looking at, yeah. you know, the other teams, I know Lake country Lutheran had a little injury, right? A guy's out now yeah. for a team who's a big player. I mean, it's not hurdle, yeah. but six, five, I think third leading score, good defender. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a that's, big loss. That is, but yeah, you know, if if West Salem, you know, 26 and one, they got the best record out of the four. They're going to be number one. It just seems how it's been this year with the computer. I think, yeah, Lake Country L- Lutheran, you know, they played some tough games. Put them, I, I think what you said is going to be probably how, how it turns out then. But I think St. Thomas Moore at a four, considering, you know, how they've played. I mean, they've had, they've played some, they've had some big offensive showings, a lot of offensive output from that squad. I think, you know, maybe we might see, you know, I, the four and the one that might be if you know, West Salem and that that might be that might be an interesting game there and yeah Lake Country Lutheran and Brilliant if that's the matchup we see you know all eyes will be on it'll be Hurdle versus Lorenz arguably the top two players left you know right now in Division three I think that'll be a semi showdown for the ages what do you think Robert Yeah I think that's I mean if I'm a Brilliant fan which I am but if I'm a Brilliant I probably if I had to pick a team to play, I'd probably play St. Thomas Moore first just because I think brilliant team. I mean, Mason Banky tonight did a tremendous job on Landon Van, Val, I can't even say his name, Van Castle or whatever his name is. Um, he did a tremendous job, uh, was all over him, especially late in the game. Like, he is an absolute animal. Like, he was – so I think, you know, you just got him and Keaton Holly, and you just got the length of Geiger and Lorenz. I just think we we'll, we could show St. Thomas more, you know, some defense they haven't seen this year. And then I'd say, yeah, with that injury, I think, you know, if you just put a good game plan against Luke Hurdle and you keep him at bay, I think that's your other thing. Because I've, I've watched some West Salem this year. They're, they're very good. They're the real deal. They haven't played the toughest schedule, but they're the real deal. They have a 6'7 kid. They have a 6'3 kid as their top two scorers. And they're long, they're really athletic, and they only have one loss to Eau Claire uh, Memorial, who got knocked off today. But yeah, that's or Eau Claire North, whoever one played Nita today, they lost to. So that's Division be, One, so right? Yeah, so, a Division One yeah. team. So there you go. Yeah, a very good team they lost to. So they're the real deal. So yeah, I would say I think they'll play LCL, and I'm I'm perfectly confident in that matchup for Brilliant. That's what Brilliant wants to hear. All of E Town was at that game, I'd say. You know, looking at looking at how packed TR was, to say the least. But yeah, I guess as a Valor's Viking alumni, I can say my school beat a team that was in state this year, which is pretty yes. cool to say. Considering, you know, that brilliant team, what they were able to do this year, you know, even for Valor's being one of those ser- serving up one of those two losses to Brilliant because wow, they've been impressive down the stretch. And, yeah, hopefully that continues in the state tournament at the Kohl Center. And, Robert, will we see you at the Kohl Center Thursday? Oh, yeah. Um, I know I don't have any classes this Thursday particularly. Um, I will be in the Kohl Center Thursday. Never know. I mean, the WIA did comment on our Instagram, so I might send an email. Maybe press pass question mark. No, probably not, but. That would be something, but I will, yeah, I will definitely be down there for Ron Colley and Brilliant. Those two sessions, Thursday, Friday, obviously there won't be any sessions, EWC teams, but probably be catch the D2 and D1 games there. And then, yeah, I'll obviously be there for championship Saturday. Hopefully we have some teams playing on Saturday. That would be awesome to bring home some hardware. Of course, yeah, I Sadly, won't be there Thursday, but I will be there Friday and Saturday. So hopefully I'll get to see an EWC team. Hopefully one of them can pull out a win so I can see one, see them Saturday. But yeah, like we said, we're going to keep this brief. And Robert, with that, you got anything else? No, go Lions, go Jets. And yeah, that's pretty much about it. Yeah, you bet. Go Lions, go Jets. And what a day. As I said, March 12, 2022 was incredible for the EWC. And with that, Thank you all for listening to yet another episode of Jordan and Drew, the sports crew, the perfect podcast for you.